Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Mullen here today with you. Um, very excited to have you guys on this webinar. Today we've got John Chumley, our project lead at our R&D department. He's going to be talking about how project views um, drive conceptual estimates as well as how templates tie into that. We're also going to have a time for a brief Q&A after, so if you have any questions uh, as he's presenting, please send those in. We'd love to hear them. And without any further ado, I will let John take it away. All right, thank you, Melissa. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, today, we're going to kind of start looking at our new project view. Uh, the project view was introduced with our 2018 2.0 version of Estimator. And so, we just kind of wanted to give everybody a, a look at, at how the project view can be used and as well as how we can use it to drive conceptual estimates. Um, so, at this point, all I've done is I've, I've just created a new blank empty estimate. Um, this is the new project view, so you'll notice we have, you know, basically look up a spreadsheet, and then over on the right-hand side are our estimate properties. Uh, these estimate properties are available throughout the estimate to use in formulas and um, units of measure and things like that. So, one of the great benefits with the project view is we now have the ability to actually load in an existing spreadsheet. So, I'm going to go ahead and load this up. And I'm going to open up an area study that we have for a residential tower. Um, as you can see, a, a lot of these things are all based on formulas. If we kind of come down here, we can look, you know, we have our uh, total building area um, broken down. If you look up, you can see that this is a formula just adding everything up. So one of the things that we can quickly do is we know that we want to use this for our total building area. So I'm just going to come over here. I've got this cell already selected in the spreadsheet. I'm going to grab the total building area and I'm going to be able to link those properties. So once I've actually linked those properties together, you'll notice they highlight and the value carries over into the total building area. We can also create new properties real time just by coming in and selecting them. So if we look at our elevators, I'm going to tag my elevator and we're going to call this number of elevators. So you can notice it's going to create a, a property over here and auto link those two together. I'm going to go ahead and also tag a couple of other properties that we can use um, to kind of start building out our conceptual estimate. So we're going to look at our number of below grade levels. So number of below grade. And again, we're creating a property to go along with that one. And let's go ahead and also add our number of above grades. Okay. so. This is just kind of the start of setting up for our conceptual estimate. So now that you've got some things that are tagged that are going to actually drive your estimate, we can come over here and I'm just going to add a line item. And since I tagged some stuff with the elevators, I'm going to go look for an elevator. And we'll grab an elevator, passenger elevator that's based on a per stop. I'm not going to actually worry about any of the quantities right now um, because those will be driven by our, our properties. So I'm just going to add that. Now in our estimate view, um, if you haven't worked with it before, you can actually come over and look for um, show our columns. And so one of the columns that's available that you can drag out and show is your formula. So we're actually going to use this formula now to drive the cost for uh, this line item. So in the formula, I know I have my um, number of above. So we have the number above grade. And we have our number below grade. And if you don't remember these as you're going through, you can actually click and find these variables in the list below. Um, but then we want to do that by number of elevators. And 
hopefully I got all of those correct. No errors on it. You can grab that in, and I must have had a formula error. So let me go check my variables and make sure I grab the right ones. Let's see, I got number elevators. Number, oh, above grade levels and below grade levels. See, that's why you use a little picker. And I could have just selected these, but since I already have those put in there, I wanted to just type it. So what we're doing. Okay, looks better. So now you can see that we have 51 stops based on this formula. So I'm going to grab this project view. It's going to get a little crowded on the monitor here, but to be able to see how these work together. So you started your conceptual estimate. They come back and say, you know what? We actually need five elevators for this building. So instead of coming and trying to find everywhere where you entered this, because imagine you have other line items that are, are dealing with this, you can quickly come over here and say, well, now we actually are going to have five elevators in our shaft. And you'll notice we had 51 stops up there. Once we change that, we now have 85 stops. So we're still just working with the area study, and that is actually driving our conceptual estimate. So what we're showing here is building out a single estimate, and it's, you know, it, it is time consuming to go through and set all these formulas up. So when you combine the project view with the power of creating templates, you can actually speed this process up quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this estimate and we're going to come down here so you can have templates for various project types that you're dealing with um, so you notice we've got a uh, I've got a hospital conceptual estimate so that we can have things based on you know number of beds number of ORs different things like that um, so here the residential conceptual estimate this one is actually built with um, the same uh, area study that we were just looking at. So we're going to actually create a new estimate from this template. So when I come in and create it, we're going to ask what is our estimate name? So we'll call this uh, two part place. And we're just going to leave the other client information alone for now. So now when we create this estimate, it's going to actually take in all the information that was stored in the template and get us a, a jump start on building out our conceptual estimate. So now you can notice we, we're still working with the same area study, but you can see we've now mapped quite a few additional cells and properties. Um, I know it's a little hard to see on a small screen, but you can see the various places that are highlighted. Um, if you want to kind of see what something's tied to from over here, you can actually double click in the on the property and it will jump you to the cell. So if you're curious as to what it's, you know, what it's actually tied to, um, we can jump back and forth and look at those. And I've kept the formula in here so you can kind of see these formulas can get um, a little crazy. So when you start thinking about something like dealing with um, your cladding, for example, any change to any one thing is going to drive changes to your cladding, to the overall area, lots of things come into play. So if you were actually having to go in and manually change your quantities, it, it's open for a risk of missing some items. So by building this out in a template to begin with and getting all those line items that you need to you know, that you're going to be concerned with and getting all the formulas built out properly um, allows the next estimator that's coming in that's doing the same project type to get a jump start on building that conceptual estimate. So now that we've got that, we can see that things like um, our interiors, our um, cladding, so we have some solid and some glass enclosure. You know, they're based on the cladding area times percentages of glass. Um, and then all of those are actually driven from the areas of the, the actual floor inside. And so 
we've got an estimate. We've got floor 13. Nobody wants to end on the 13th floor plus a penthouse. Um, so if we want to go in and the owner asks for an additional floor, we can come in here and say, okay, well, we're going to have the same areas in that floor. So I'm just going to copy, paste this. Now let's notice we have $97 million worth. This is basically going to now add a new floor. And you can see we've jumped up to 102 million um, going in and adding a new floor. We can also come in, you know, because these are all formulas, just like working in Excel, they're dealing with ranges. I can actually come in here, um, insert another row. We're going to have a level 21. And say they want tall ceilings in there. So we can have 12 foot ceilings. I can come up here to one of these where we already have all the other information to get all my formulas. Ooh, get carried away with my copy. Quickly come down here, paste that into level 21. So we've now added another floor and you can see we're now up to 108 million. So we can quickly um, react to changes in the area study and have that drive the conceptual estimate. As far as, you know, building this out, this can, here we're dealing with, um, you know, just the, the area and the, the skin studies. Um, these can be built for anything. You can, you can go into the level of detail for MEP, um, for any line items you want to add. And I guess, uh, I guess we'll open up to questions. That's, that's what I've got today for you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, John. Um, so one of the questions that we've got here today uh, kind of has to do with, you know, now that we have, you know, this conceptual estimate, it, so what, you know, what, what can I do with it? What, what's the benefit here? Yeah, so this is great. So when, when you have the, once you have the conceptual estimate, you can save that off as a conceptual estimate. You can create a new version um, with our upcoming release. You can version that estimate. And then you can actually use that as your starting point as you start moving into CD and onto DD. Um, the great thing about having that is now you can actually go into the comparison view and look at where we're at now, where we were conceptually, find where those differences are, um, and, and be able to answer the, the questions appropriately based on that. Very cool. Uh, so it sounds like there's a lot of benefit internally obviously um is there any benefit externally like when you're communicating with a project owner definitely so you know all, all changes have impacts um the longer it takes us to find what those impacts those changes and get that information back to the owner the more risk that's involved so you know being able to have your conceptual your conceptual estimate tied up to say an area study or you know, even if it's just a, a spreadsheet that has just a list of questions that you're filling out to fill out the information to drive that, um, you can quickly go in. I mean, we saw I could add a new floor, a new, new banks of elevators and have instant results. So now we don't need, you know, a day turnaround to go and find and make sure we've touched everything that's impacted by that change. We can quickly make a change in the attached study and have an answer within you know minutes mm, that's fantastic because as we know time is absolutely critical pre-construction uh we've got another question here from kirsten dagger and she wants to know do excel shortcuts work with this type of spreadsheet um some shortcuts do not all shortcuts um it's it's really kind of a an excel light spreadsheet um Formulas work the same. So any of the formulas you're, you're working with um, will work the same, copy, paste, um, some of those things. Um, the, the idea really is to build out your spreadsheet. That's why we have the import to, to really let you set that up exactly like you want it. Um, as we're looking at this area study with all the uh, color, different colors and, and breakouts and stuff like that, that's not something that you can easily do um, using this tool. Um, so that's you know why we allow for an import so you can have it the look and feel that you want when you start actually tying costs to it. But for the most part, most of your various functions work and you can work with multiple sheets as well. I know I just brought in um, 
a spreadsheet with just a single tab, but you can have multiple tabs and you can reference, um, your formulas can reference those other tabs just like you would in Excel. Okay, fantastic. That's, that's really good to know. Um, so I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Um, thank you again, Chum, for presenting this demonstration. Uh, to everyone else who's still on, we have another webinar coming up in two weeks with Jeff Caffrey from Harper. It will be Wednesday, uh, July 31st, 10 a.m. He's going to be talking about using Estimator in an environmental system setting. So please be sure to register for that. Um, you'll also be getting a recording of this webinar uh, after we're finished here. Hope to see you guys in a couple of weeks and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.